Hi, I'm Annie. Merry, happy holidays. It's a very drizzly day here in Eugene, Oregon. So I've been thinking a lot lately about the concept of happiness as a choice. This is something I've thought about a lot in my lifetime because it's been one of my biggest struggles. And also recently, if you're in the objective personality class, they did a class about this idea of happiness as a choice. I have a long history of pessimism and I've traditionally been pretty miserable. Hence the name of my channel, Miserable Cow. I sort of identify as a miserable cow. So I've been thinking about the original intention of this channel that I created. A few years ago, I reached a point where I was really just tired of being miserable. I didn't want to do that anymore. Finally, the idea that happiness as a choice was kind of starting to sink in. I was starting to entertain the possibility that maybe happiness is a choice. And I wanted to explore that because I had reached a limit of pessimism. I just reached a point where I was done. Hearing that happiness is a habit has been a very difficult thing for me to hear throughout my life. And especially when people come at me with this really overzealous cheerleader energy telling me to be positive all the time, honestly, it just isn't helpful. It's just really fucking irritating. And I wanted to use this channel as a safe place for me to process that out loud. And then if anyone watching that process also struggles with this same energy, maybe they will see the channel as, you know, a safe place to explore that idea that happiness is a choice. And also just the idea that mood in general is a habit. Anxiety is a habit. Joyfulness is a habit. If you like feeling joyful, you can cultivate a habit of feeling that more often. You can't feel it all the time because that's fucking delusional, but you can feel joyful more often. It's just a habit. It's something you cultivate. You can do it. And so I thought to myself, if I ever figure this out, if I figure out how to go from being a pessimistic person to an optimistic, but you know, very grounded, balanced, optimistic person, then I want to help other people do that too. And I thought, I'm going to be so good at this because I've come from a history of being a pessimistic person, so I'm going to know how to talk to pessimists in a way that isn't irritating, in a way that isn't a turnoff. And it turns out it's still really hard to do. I mean, I haven't had a lot of opportunities to do this with people, but just in little encounters that I've had with pessimistic people, you know, trying to ask questions to kind of draw them out or move them to a different perspective, it's really obvious that the resistance is so intense and that when you're a pessimistic person you're just kind of like locked into a separate paradigm it's just like a you know a parallel reality that you're just locked into it feels so real and so when you hear people on the other side saying saying no no you can feel better i i want you to understand this happiness is a choice it's just grating. Um, so I don't really know how to speak to pessimistic people, but it's, but I'm still holding out hope that maybe I could cultivate that skill over time, or maybe I could meet people who are ready, like I was ready. I was at a point where I was ready to become more optimistic because I just kind of hit a wall. Then maybe I can meet those people and try to help them through the process. I don't know, but it's a really tricky one. In thinking about this and observing myself, I kind of came to the same conclusion that Dave and Shan came to. It's just really hard to help people who are in pessimism get out of it. Just because it's such a powerful habit, it's so deeply entrenched. A lot of people, when they're younger, they have an external locus of control. They feel like the world is happening to them. Circumstances are happening to them. And most people, as they get older and get more mature, have more of an internal locus of control. They realize that their actions create their reality. So if you're in school and you don't study, you will fail the test. The test doesn't fail you you fail the test because you didn't study. So a really young, immature person will think that the test failed them. You know, school is happening to them. The test is an external circumstance that is ruining their life when really they were always in control. If you study, you have a chance of passing the test. 
you failed the test. The test didn't fail you. See, it's just like a perceptual shift. And most people can understand that when it comes to, you know, external things. If you practice guitar, you will get better. If you exercise every day, you will get stronger. But when it comes to habits of mood, it's just really hard for people to hear that mood is a habit. They think, you know, if they're really down, really bitter, really pessimistic, it's because there's something wrong with the world. It's just almost like a bridge too far to ask people to take that concept of an internal locus of control and apply it to their own habits of thinking and emotion. It's a really tough one for a lot of people. But moving from pessimism to optimism is really about taking radical responsibility for your thinking and for your mood. So I think the best that you can do if there's someone really pessimistic in your life and you see them struggling, you just want them to be more comfortable. You want them to know that instead of noticing all the negative circumstances of the world, they can notice the positive things or they can be more solution minded. When challenges come up, they can automatically, instead of going to pain, suffering, this is shitty, you just automatically go to, how can I fix this? What can I do to make this better? What can I do to make this more comfortable? Going to solution becomes the default. So when you see someone in that pessimistic state and you wanna help them, I don't really know what you can do except just plant the seed. If you are very authentic and real and open about your own journey from being pessimistic to becoming more optimistic, in the, then it might plant a seed in the person's mind and then when they're ready to take those steps and do the practice that it takes to cultivate more positive thinking, then maybe they'll be a little bit further ahead. Or maybe, you know, you'll get a phone call from that person and they'll say, hey, do you remember when you said that uh, happiness was a choice and I spit in your face and told you to fuck off? <laughs> um, I, I was wondering if like maybe we could talk about that now because I'm starting to think that maybe you were onto something. So I think that's all you can really do is just model the behavior and plant the seed and not come at it with that crazy cheerleader energy because nobody likes that. Very, very few people like that shit. It, probably nobody is ever, ever going to accuse me of having cheerleader energy because obviously I just, I just don't. So then when a person is ready to do the practice that it takes to change those habits of thinking, you know, replace negative habits of thinking with more positive habits, then you can get somewhere. The problem is that with your mood, it's just so entrenched and you will keep going unconscious over and over and over again. So you really have to be vigilant. The first thing that you practice when you're trying to stop being pessimistic is just catching the pessimism. You have to catch yourself going to that place and bring yourself back into awareness and say, wait a minute, I have a choice. Your brain is trained to notice negative things. You have a habit of noticing the negative things in your environment and in your life. And it's just a habit and it's training, it's programming. You've done it for so long that it's automatic, but you can also train your brain to notice the positive things, notice good things, notice that things work out. And also notice that the challenges are a gift. Life is not happening to you, it is happening for you. The challenges are a gift. I think that that's one of the things you really have to internalize if you wanna be a more positive person. The other thing that you can ask yourself is, what is more comfortable? Does it feel good to think a lot of really negative thoughts all the time? How does that make me feel in my body? Am I having fun? <laughs> is this enjoyable? Does it feel comfortable to have this worldview? I mean, you can shift your perception and adopt a different worldview and be more comfortable. And I'm not in any way saying that you should ignore all the negativity. There's lightness and dark. So if you're exclusively pessimistic all the time, that's bad. It's unhealthy. And more importantly, it's just not comfortable. It's not a fun way to live. And if you only see the light stuff all the time and only see positivity and you're sort of denying the darkness, that's just delusional. It's not healthy either. So you really kind of have to find a balance. But one of the things that you can do throughout the day, if you have a negative thought is say, is this comfortable? I mean, what, what would be a more comfortable way of perceiving this? 
because that's the whole point. We don't want to be in pain all the time. Being pessimistic and continually stepping on to that downward spiral over and over again is just not comfortable when you can choose the upward spiral. When I was really pessimistic, it felt so real. <laughs> it just, that's why it's so hard to, to help someone get out of pessimism because it feels so incredibly real. And so when I started running, when I first started running, it was all really new to me and I felt like a manatee while I was running. <laughs> it's really what I felt like in my body. I could kind of visualize a manatee trying to run down the running trail and it was uncomfortable. It felt awkward and so weird. Retraining my brain to notice positive things, to feel abundant, to feel joyful was the same thing. It just felt completely awkward. The one simple practice that really worked and I mean it's really like the only tool that I needed to move into a more positive worldview was just the practice of writing in a gratitude journal. And that sounds so cheesy because we've all heard it a million times, you know, just write in your gratitude journal every day. But that really was the one thing that just changed everything. Doing it every day consistently just retrained my brain to notice positivity, to notice the good things. It just made me more positive overall. And then that piece about going to solution first before going to pain, just kind of happen naturally. I mean, you just really can start to see the positive in everything to such an extent that even when challenges come your way, you start to see them as opportunities. And it's not easy, like challenges suck, like things are uncomfortable, but you can really start to see how you can leverage the challenge to catapult yourself into more success in your life. And it feels good to know that I can be happy regardless of my external circumstances. Now, I don't want to push that too far, you know? I don't want to do any like Viktor Frankl level, like Auschwitz happiness training, because um, that's really hardcore. That guy, if you've ever read uh, the Viktor Frankl book, he's talking about discovering that happiness is a choice while he is being tortured in a concentration camp. Like that's really hardcore where, you know, I'm just dealing with my little observer freakouts and, and, um, you know, just like little challenges throughout my life. That was one of the things, even when I was really pessimistic, I would notice that like, say I had a challenging work situation. I thought tomorrow at my office is going to be so lame because I have this challenging client and this could go wrong, that could go wrong. Really, you know, the extroverted intuition, thinking of the negative possibilities, this is gonna go wrong, that's gonna go wrong, it's gonna suck, it's gonna be so shitty. And then the next day would come and I would be showered with blessings, you know? The client was an angel, the interaction was so enriching, it was so good. Um, and then I felt like a piece of shit for awfulizing so much, you know, just thinking of all the negative possibilities and being really resistant, like this client's going to be a pain in the ass. They're not going to show up on time, you know, because I just have this huge thing about flakiness. It's like the devil. Like if you flake on me, it just irritates me more than anything else. Like if you don't show up for an appointment. So I would like anticipate this, you know, they're not going to show up. They're this or that. And then it would be amazing. I would have an incredible interaction. And then I would feel like shit for being pessimistic because life was just showing me over and over again, you are so privileged. I was just really starting to get fed up with myself. Just sick of seeing this pattern in myself over and over again and just stepping outside of myself and observing my little pessimistic shitty self and just thinking like god what a brat like what a spoiled brat so anyway that's it i don't know just i watched the show from the objective personality class and i guess they were talking about a lot of the same things but really coming to the conclusion that it is really difficult to help people that when you're stuck in pessimism it feels so incredibly real you don't really start to climb out of it until you're ready so I think just um, being real with people about the lightness and the darkness and just giving your testimonial that, you know, maybe you were a pessimistic person and you've changed and now you're more comfortable and you're more positive more often. I think if people just 
hear that, then maybe they'll be able to see that they can have that too. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I like talking about this idea of mood as a habit, something that I work on a lot in myself. If you want to talk about this with me, you can check out my snug link in the description.